Magical, dreamy, pretty. These are some attributes I would use to describe Hannah Queer's art. You might have seen some YouTube videos from her or seen her artwork. Hannah is a illustrator, VTuber artist and a big artistic inspiration of mine. I find her art beautiful and decided to study it because of this. In today's video, I'm sharing my findings from these studies by first breaking down her art and then drawing my own character in her art style. In the end, I reflect on what I learned from doing this and mention what I would want to include in my own art from this study. Let's start with the breakdown of her art. The way I went about this is to make notes about how the artist portrayed lines, bodies, faces with a focus on the eye, hair, clothes, colors, lighting as well as extra effects. I watched her YouTube videos and some time lapses to get more insights about the way she draws characters. My notes are focusing on the different features though and not the step-by-step -step process the artist uses to draw. This is because when I myself want to take inspiration from other artists, I'm more interested to apply what I see in their art in my own way, using my own process rather than following the exact same step-by-step -step process the artist uses. Both methods of studying, focusing on the step-by-step -step process or focusing just on how it visually looks, can be very insightful though. Now let's move on to the notes I made about her art style. Let's start with how Hannah draws line art. She uses lots of varying line thickness. The face outline often is the thickest line. Most of the lines have a dark brown color. Sometimes they're colored slightly darker than the flat color around them. The lines are also painted over sometimes. She uses rather few lines since she also uses painterly strokes to define folds for example. For the bodies Hannah draws, they are rather thin and her characters can have pretty thin long necks. Moving on to the faces, the face shape is mostly rounded, she uses more pointy rounded jaws or cheeks for younger and more feminine characters. The nose has a bit of a red blush on it and sometimes a small shadow underneath. She draws two lines for nostrils or one line or one line and a nostril to portray the nose. For the mouth, the lips are colored. They have a small plump form with a highlight on it for more feminine characters while for more masculine ones, the lips are longer and thinner. The eyebrows are often a bit higher up on the face but for more masculine characters, they tend to be further down. Now let's talk about a part that makes every artist very unique, the eyes. First, I'm focusing on the outlines and shapes of the eye. This is what you would focus on during the sketching or line art phase, mostly. The shape Hannah draws the eyes in tends to be a common shape that is often longer, thinner for masculine characters, while for feminine ones, it's taller and more rounded. She uses around four to six lashes around the eyelash. The upper eyelash is pretty thick, while the lower one is not always fully outlined and thinner, but there always is a line at the edge and middle of it. For lines around the eye, she draws one or sometimes two lines above the eye to portray the eyelid. The second higher line here would be very small. Now moving on to the colors, what is important while shading the eyes. First of all, the iris has a circular rounded shape, while the shading of it can vary a bit from illustration to illustration. Here is one method I figured out to draw eyes like these. The first shadow would be around the iris outline, it is thicker at the top. This shadow also includes a smaller circle shape around the pupil. A second darker shadow would be there only under the eyelid. Then to make the upper eyelid separated from the iris, a reflected light under the eyelid is added. Something that draws a lot of attention to the eye to me is the differently colored bright circle around the iris Hannah draws. Finally, at the bottom of the iris there can be smaller lighter strokes or shapes. To make the eyes look alive, adding highlights is important and Hannah uses lots of small highlights for this. The biggest one is often placed above the iris and smaller highlights are at the left or right side below the iris. Other highlights around the eye are placed on the lashes. They kind of outline them, making them look more 3D-ish. And finally, for the white of the eye, a regular shadow that's cast from the eyelash is used. Now for all other shading on the face I haven't mentioned yet. Around the eyes, Hannah draws the darkest shadow under the eyebrow and a lighter one above the eyelid. More masculine characters tend to have a shaded outline under the eye which also sometimes has some highlights on it. There also is some blush underneath the eyes. And other than that, the face often has a shaded outline of the face contour and there most of the time is a shadow under the mouth defining the chin. Now we're moving on to another aspect that can be very unique to each artist, the hair. For drawing hair, Hannah uses really fluffy hair art. It has lots of flowiness and freediness through changes of direction. The hair often looks like it's in motion and she makes hair strands look more 3D by drawing them like ribbons. Next I move on to the hair shading. Hannah explained her process for this in one of her videos. She starts with adding a light gradient at the top and a dark gradient at the bottom. Then using the lasso tool, she selects a zigzag pattern following the shape of the head. She then fills this in using different gradients while paying attention to adding various hues and reflecting colors. To achieve layer shading, this is repeated multiple times. She also adds a glow around the face using a color close to the skin this way. This is all used as a base, but after this, Hannah adds in more sharp painterly strokes using different colors as well as hue variations to separate different layers of hair. 
So overall her hair shading is made up of zigzag shapes that are slightly rounded following the flow of the hair with some painterly strokes added, including lots of variation in colors. The highlights Hannah adds for the hair follow the head sphere. They're mostly white but sometimes colored. They have a zigzaggy messy shape and are placed above the forehead pretty high up. The highlights can often vary. For this one character she for example even used an outline below it for drawing it on light hair. And the last aspect for the hair I mentioned is how the artist draws hair that's over the eyes. When this happens, the lashes under the hair tend to be slightly visible still. And here's how Hannah portrays clothes. She mostly draws rather few, more sketchy lines. Some folds are indicated through shading only. To make the colors of the clothes stand out, she also uses some hue variation or subsurface scattering to outline the shadows sometimes. Speaking of colors, let's talk about what colors Hannah tends to use. Her art has a rather warm pinkish undertone and when she adds hue variation, it tends to be using blue, purple or pink colors most of the time. Now we're moving on to shading and lighting. Hannah uses lots of painterly shading that has rather sharp edges most of the time. She sometimes makes use of more of a style shading technique by using the lasso tool to select areas and paint in shadows. To make the face stand out more, she also adds one darker shadow. The neck often has both more and less saturated shading underneath. The shadow colors are usually a bit more saturated than the flat ones. During one of her videos, she also explained that you can add a multiply layer over everything to create a shadow. Then you can paint in colored lights using overlay layers or by erasing parts of this multiply layer. And now for the final aspect I'll mention in this analysis part, the extra effects and what stands out. As extra effects, Hannah likes to add in small tiny white sparkles and particles when the character is drawn. What stands out to me about her art would be all the color and hue variation, the detail of the eyes, as well as the detail of the hair. The line art looks very fluffy and soft here. She also mentioned that she draws the hair uniquely for each character in one of her videos. Now we move on to the next part of studying Hannah Puyo's art, drawing in the art style. Here I mention how I applied what I just mentioned and my experience while drawing. My own drawing process is made of the sketch, lines, flat colors and the shading or adjustments phase. Now onto the process of drawing in her art style. I decided to draw one of my OCs and go for a similar look to the characters she painted in her Drawing Your OCs videos. I used an older thumbnail sketch for the pose. In the sketching phase, I was focusing on getting the proportions similar to Hannah Kui's art. I also made sure to add in lashes for the eyes. Something I also paid attention to was that the hair volume would work with the hair silhouette. At first I thought the eyes would be bigger, but while drawing I noticed that she draws a bit more realistic, just slightly bigger eyes when it comes to more masculine characters. The big outlines through the lashes emphasize the eyes though. Something that stood out to me when seeing her process was that she sometimes blocks in the iris shape without a outline at first. I didn't do this during this process myself, but I find it can be very helpful if you're struggling with getting the same volume for the iris for both sides of the eye. While drawing this pose, getting the shoulder and arm anatomy to work was also a bit difficult. I used fairly realistic proportions, but I didn't have a reference for how she would draw arms for male characters at this angle and how muscular they would be. Now onto the line art. I focused on getting a fluffy look for the hair through using quick flowy strokes, only applying light pressure when drawing. I should do this more often, it's fun and feels more natural to me for hair especially. I sometimes tend to press on the screen too much maybe and this makes my lines not as flowy. I really enjoyed doing the hair line art here. I also adjusted the hair strands a bit since I noticed I at first had more hair strands on one side than the other for the silhouette and I wanted to balance this. After I was done with the whole line art, I adjusted the line thickness for the hair and body by painting over my strokes but then I realized the added line thickness was maybe putting less emphasis on the face and when I looked at references of her art I saw that the line thickness can vary a bit especially for the outfits from piece to piece so I'm unsure if I prefer the added line thickness or not. While filling in the flat colors, I used a bit darker, warmer and more contrasting colors than my original character design had. Since my own art is a bit more parcel and purpley while Hannah's tends to be warmer and more pinkish. Finally for shading. Doing the eyes was especially fun to me, while for many characters the eye shading can vary in Hannah's art, I followed my own analysis notes to shade the eyes. For the hair I was able to use the same steps as she does, since as mentioned before, she explained how she shades it in one of her Drawing Your OCs videos. What I found interesting is that for some of her art, the lightest part of the hair is actually right next to where the hair part is and not around the forehead or face. Another thing that stood out to me was that she uses not just one ring of hair highlights around the head in some of her art. I painted over the lashes in the end. This made them look more 3D. I also added a small bluish tint under the chin, which I saw in one of her illustrations, which looked really nice to me. For adding in colors, lights and shadows later on, I had a bit of a difficult time with adding nice hue variation. This is something that really stands out to me about Nakuya's art, the many variations of colors using different lighting layers. 
I tried out adding a light from the left side with a light orange pinkish hard light layer. And finally I painted in some small sparkles. I really like adding small elements like this in the end. For the future I would probably just create some sparkle brushes or something like that to be able to add this more quickly. And that's it for my style study of Hana Kue. Here are some things that turned out differently from her art to me and things I would want to improve on. My lines aren't as clean, fluffy or soft overall, but for the hair it looks better than for the rest of the line art to me. My eyes also turned out more flat, they don't look as integrated or blended into the face to me. Finally, here is what I really enjoyed when drawing in her style and what I will probably incorporate in my own art in some way. For one, we have the way she draws eyes. They look 3 ish and detailed, which is something I struggle with in my own art. Then I want to use fluffy line art for the hair and for shading it I also want to use both zigzag shapes but also painterly strokes. The facial proportions Hannah uses are something I also want to be inspired by when I'm drawing my own faces. Then there is the way she uses colors and hue variations. I want to add more hue variation within the shadow for at least the skin or hair. And I would like to incorporate small sparkles in my art as element sometimes as well. It gives the art more of a dreamy feeling which I like a lot. That would be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and could learn from this. Check Hanako's art out if you haven't already. Also, before I end this, I wanted to mention that these channels were big inspirations to me when making this video, and I've learned a lot from their artist study videos as well. I like experimenting with video ideas based around my projects, and this was one I haven't done before. Any feedback would be highly appreciated. Thanks for watching, and bye.